Okay, we're back and today we're going to get started looking at some rotational dynamics. Now this is a topic that's a little bit more involved and it's one that can oftentimes lead to confusion. So today our goal is to introduce you to the basic ideas, give you a good feel for what's going on, uh, give you a couple of examples and then we'll come back and, and look at some of these topics in more detail in future videos. Now rotational dynamics is an important topic regardless of the system you study. Even when you're looking at a linear attack, very often there's rotational motion involved. So we're going to get started and we're going to start yet again with Newton's second law. And Newton's second law tells us that if you apply a net force to a mass, that that mass will experience an acceleration. In this case, this law is a great way of understanding linear acceleration. Now what we want to do is look at this law, or at least the analog of this law, in terms of rotational motion. So we're going to introduce some new variables. Now we have a new expression. And that new expression tells us that a net torque is equal to something called the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. So let's break this down step by step. Now instead of force, we have torque. Now of course, a force applied to a mass causes an acceleration. So a force is a necessary component, whether you're looking at linear acceleration or angular acceleration, circular acceleration. So torque is going to be something that has force as a part of it. But now there's another piece. Now we're going to look at not just the force that we're applying, but the distance at which that force is being applied. And in particular, the distance uh, from the axis of rotation. So this is the expression we're going to look at for torque. For those of you that want the more mathematically correct expression, torque is equal to something called the cross product uh, of two vectors. But for our understanding, this is enough. This will give us a good feel for what's going on. So now we know if we apply a net torque, well, we'll cause a mass to experience an angular acceleration. But what is this? What is this piece? How does it relate to mass? Well, this in relationship to force is force times a distance. What you're going to find is this is mass times a distance, but not just a distance, a distance squared. Uh, and it will be some function of that, it, it, some function of mr squared. You can look it up in a table. It might be one half mr squared. It depends on the object in question. Why is this not just mass? Well, if I take a mass, of course, the larger a mass, the larger a force that will be required to impose a certain acceleration. Put another way, the larger a mass, the greater the inertia, the greater the resistance to any change in motion I try to impose. That same thing holds true here, but now there's one main difference. When you're rotating a mass, you, you can't just look at the mass that's involved. You also have to understand how you're rotating it. Because I can rotate this many different ways. I could spin it this way. I could swing it from its end. I could swing it this way. So this piece, we don't need to, to plug anything in here. Just to understand what this all, is all about, it's simply mass, but mass also with regards to how you're rotating it. Okay, so that's moment of inertia and this is angular acceleration. If you get something spinning, you might have it spinning at one revolution per second. Now perhaps you're applying a net torque and it's accelerating at an additional one revolution every second. One revolution per second per second if you will. So these are the key players. Today this is our focus, is trying to understand a little bit more about torque and we're going to look at something that we experience in our everyday life, which is just opening and closing a door. So let's head over to our door here and understand how torque relates as I apply a force to the door. So we know, we, first of all, for this to experience an angular acceleration, there has to be what? There has to be a net torque. So right now there's no force being applied, therefore there's no torque. It's, it's in equilibrium, you might say. It's just sitting there. It's not accelerating. Now, to apply a torque to get it to accelerate, there are two components. The distance from the axis and the force. What that means is if I apply a force right on the axis of rotation, what's our distance? It's zero. So what's our torque? 
zero. It's not going to accelerate. Now if I move out a little bit and I apply the force, it experiences an acceleration. Now if I maintain the same force, but I increase the distance, what happens to the torque? The torque increases. What this means is, if I apply the same force out here, this is going to accelerate much faster. Or conversely, to get this door to accelerate just as fast, I have to apply less force here than I do here. That's why it's easier to open a door pushing at the end than it is pushing in the center. And this is a simple case, but it's one that actually, if you look at and explore some of what's going on here, there are additional implications uh, that you'll be able to find with regards to your martial arts techniques. Uh, at least additional implications uh, compared to what we're going to share with you today. Today I want to give you just one simple illustration of this in action. So I have Justin here to help out. We're going to look at a basic trip. And to do this, just for, for the sake of keeping things simple, we're going to look at Justin as if he's a solid object because this is not entirely true when you're working with objects that aren't solid. So of course, at some level, this falls apart, but it still gives you a good feel for what's going on with a basic takedown. So if I step behind him, I'm just going to do a trip. I'm not going to do a sweep. I'm not going to do a hip throw. This point of contact with our legs establishes an axis of rotation. It establishes my pivot point. So what does that mean with regards to taking him down as effortlessly as possible? Well, if I push on his midsection, that's not going to have the best effect, is it? The closer I am to that pivot point, the less torque for the same force. So if I move farther away from the pivot and I strike, and I'm just going to strike his chest, now it becomes much easier. Uh, and there's other factors that are at play, even with regards to analyzing some of the physics here. But in particular, I do want to point out, uh, with any of the physics that we share with you, you also have to consider the physiology of the situation as well. For instance, even if I wasn't maximizing, creating maximum leverage, when I strike him in the throat, I think you're going to find you're going to have a very cooperative opponent at that point, just because of the nature of the target that's involved. So uh, understanding the physics is great. It gives you a great deal of insight into some of the mechanics, but also combine that with a good understanding of the physiology that's involved within your techniques as well. Okay, so that will be it for this video. There's just a little basic introduction to rotational dynamics. You now have the analog of Newton's second law in rotational form. There's more implications that we can get out of this. So continue to look at it and ponder it on your own. Continue to look at and analyze uh, various rotating objects, including the door that we looked at today. Uh, there's a lot that's within this. There's a lot of implications here. There's a lot of applications within our martial arts techniques. And we'll come back, as I said, and explore those a little bit further in a future video. All right, take care.